Of the 12 authors in the New Jedi Order series, nine were newcomers to the Star Wars universe, while three were familiar faces from the Bantam era. There are also only two female authors, which I looked somewhat side-eye at, because in comparison, the Bantam era featured five female authors out of 14 total contributors. Kathy Tyers then was one of those familiar faces. She had written 1993's The Truce at Bakura, as well as multiple stories for both the Tales collections and the Star Wars Adventure Journal. Balance Point made it to number 13 on the New York Times bestseller list for the week of November 19th, 2000. What I remembered about Balance Point was less the book itself and more the virtual cyber environment into which it was released. For weeks afterwards, Kathy Tyers was answering people's questions on the Jedi Council forums. Her username was shmi52. Obviously, she couldn't say anything about upcoming releases or plot points, but it was a lot of fun to read her answers to people's questions and encounter a Star Wars author in the wild. So, a brief summary. There is nowhere to channel the flood of refugees fleeing the Yuuzhan Vuln, but the overcrowded world of Duro. With Selkor pledging to return the planet to health under Leia Organa Solo's watchful eye, Han, Jason, and Droma arrive on the planet in another refugee camp. They have no idea that Leia's already there, and they also don't know that Luke, Mara, and Anakin are also headed to Duro in search of a missing Jedi apprentice. But none of them realize that the Yuuzhan Vuln have chosen Duro as their next conquest. Balance Point is interesting that we have three distinct groups of our heroes. They all end up at the same place at the same time, but for a fair chunk of the story, they're completely unaware of that. So we first have Leia on Duro. Selkor has come to an agreement with the Duro government that they're going to allow refugees on the surface with the understanding that Selkor is going to try to rehabilitate it because the actual planet is so polluted from industrial waste that the Duros themselves have chosen to live in floating cities above it. Leia doesn't tell anyone where she is, but it seems that Luke and Mara know she's there, but the New Republic military doesn't. So she's basically dealing with squabbling scientists trying to get them to work together. But in another one of the settlement domes, we have Han Solo, his son Jason, his Rin buddy Droma, as well as a whole slew of refugees who have arrived on Duro. Han has not reconciled with his wife, but he is actively working to help the Rin refugees and other refugees they've picked up along the way. Droma's here. He helps Han out. He doesn't fill as large of a role as he did in Lucino's Agents of Chaos duology, but he's, he's a helpful guy to have around. And Jason is definitely struggling with the ramifications of what happened at Centerpoint Station. At the pivotal moment he told Anakin not to fire the station, Anakin didn't, Thrak and Sal Solo did, and while it defeated the Yuuzhan Vuln, it also destroyed slews of their own people. And now Centerpoint Station is once again inoperable because someone other than Anakin messed with it. Jason has run off from Coruscant, he's hiding out with his dad, and he's trying his very hardest not to use the Force. They're joined by Jaina, who's been injured during a battle. She had to go extravehicular, and the most grievous of her injuries is that she's temporarily blind. Jaina's working through a lot of anger. She's angry about what happened to her, she's angry about the war, she's angry about her family, and her mother in particular. And of all the solo kids right now, the one that I'm most worried about falling to the dark side, which is interesting considering what happens in later series, is Jaina. She's just this little bundle of anger and she's got some stuff to work through. 
Back on Coruscant, we have Luke Skywalker, Mara Jade, and their nephew Anakin Solo. Luke has been meeting with Jedi even though he's not been given permission to actually create a Jedi Council. And they hear both suspicions from the Mon Calamari healer Sogal's apprentice Techly that there's something suspicious happening at a restaurant, as well as hearing from another Jedi that her apprentice went missing on Duro. So on the suspicious restaurant front, Anakin and Mara capture a Yuz and Vuln operative. This is the first time, other than a lawn, which was just a big old trap, that they're able to capture a Yuz and Vuln. And the operative chooses to kill herself rather than talk to them at all. So it seems that going forward, trying to capture Yuz and Vuln, trying to question them is just going to be a dead end because the way their culture works is they'd rather die than interact with you at all. The three of them then head off to Duro in search of this Jedi apprentice, which means that we have the entire extended Skywalker Solo family in the same place at the same time. Luke and Mara get some big news. After four books of Mara fighting her illness, being ill all the time, perhaps taking a back seat in the narrative to other characters, she really plays a much larger role here in Balance Point. Thanks to Vergere's tear treatment, she's feeling like herself again, she's very active, she's very involved, and she finds out that she's pregnant. I liked how Tyres dealt with Mara's revelation, figuring out what was wrong with her, so to speak, what had changed, and just how very happy she and Luke are. In the Thrawn trilogy, it's a done deal that Leia's pregnant before the story starts, so we never really see how she finds out and how she feels about it. And I think this was one instance where I appreciated that this book was written by a female author, because I'm not sure a male author would have been as interested in this development, and Kathy Tyres gave Luke and Mara some really sweet scenes. Han and Leia vaguely, briefly reconcile when they have to evacuate Han's settlement because those moths are going to town eating it and they're going to be exposed to the polluted, unhealthy, deadly atmosphere. They head over to the main settlement, which is where Leia is, and in a really nice gesture, she chooses to go through decontamination with them to prove that she doesn't deserve special treatment. As an Alderanian, she's a refugee like the rest of them, and the cost is her beautiful trademark hair. At the time, some people were really upset about this development, but hair is hair. I say this as a person who regularly cuts hair off and donates it. It will grow back, and it was a very nice gesture for her to make. Of the solo kids, Anna kids still working through what kind of Jedi he wants to be, how he wants to use the Force, how he wants to tackle things. Jaina has a lot of anger and resentment to work through, specifically in regard to her mother. And then we have Jason. In this book, Jason has ping-ponged towards he doesn't want to use the Force much at all, minimally if possible. When the refugee settlement is threatened, he doesn't want to kill the beetles, but then realizes he has to kill the beetles. So there's this constant push and pull with Jason of, I don't want to use the force at all, but I have to use the force here. He talks to Luke once Luke and them all arrive, and Luke points out that he either has to decide he's going to use the force or he's not going to use the force. And Jason goes, fine then, I won't use the force at all. And I just want to be like, Jason. Like, that's not what he wanted you to decide, Jason. And then so it's frustrating because for the rest of the story, Jason's like, sorry, can't use the force. And Jane is annoyed with him. Even his mother possibly is a little annoyed with him. Until it reaches a point where the fate of someone that he loves is in the balance. He will not be able to save his mother if he doesn't use the Force. And he finally goes, okay, I'll open myself up to it. And he does an amazing feat and he defeats the Warmaster. But I almost felt like, buddy, 
why didn't you do this sooner? But they're not alone on Duro. We also have Randa the Hutt from Jedi Eclipse, who is now a refugee in Han settlement. He's not happy about it. He keeps trying to get Jaina or Jason to join his idea for a Kaip Durin-like revenge squadron against the Vald. He's able to contact his mother. He briefly betrays them, then changes his mind, then says he doesn't want to betray them. And he gets a, a good death for a hut. He wants to be good. He wants to atone for what he's done, but still in the end, he's a hut. So he's very selfish. And yet he still died to try to give Leia a chance to escape. We have the Peace Brigade working with the Duro government. The Peace Brigade are just there. They're like nasty, mostly humans. Eh. Naminor is also here on Duro, posing as a Duros scientist, ostensibly helping Selkor and Leia, but in actuality, not, because it's Naminor. And that guy really gets around, though, because we saw him at the end of Jedi Eclipse on Coruscant, meeting with the Senator Viki Sesh. And now it's two months later, and apparently he's been in, on Duro the whole time, so I don't know if he teleports, if he has a time turner, but he definitely is everywhere. We also have the War Master Savon Law, who attacks Duro, is interested in the Jedi Knights, and after his confrontation in the end with Jason, puts out an ultimatum against them. First, I was happy to see that at the beginning of Balance Point, we had a map that showed the current Yuzun Valm invasion route into the galaxy. Overlaying this over my existing map, I was able to fill in a lot of the planets that I had missed. And so it gave me a better picture of the state of the galaxy at this point in time. I thought the initial premise of the entire Solo family pretty much being on Duro without knowing? A little far-fetched. No one knows where Leia is, so that's why they send Jaina to Han. And while I agree that Han can't use the Force, and Jason was choosing not to use the Force, Jaina can and does. So why didn't she sense her mother on Duro, or vice versa? Once they're all reunited and once Luke and Mara and Anakin arrive, it seems like all the Force-sensitive individuals can keep track of where everyone is. But before that, it's a complete and utter surprise that Leia is there at the same time as them. It's an essential premise. Tyres needs to get everyone in the same place at the same time, and then needs to bring them together once Nominor's, you know, meddling schemes come to pass. But it was a little hard for me to swallow at first. In reading Balance Point, I realized that I had made a fatal, incorrect assumption in earlier books. I took the fact that Michael Jan Friedman's Nightfall trilogy was cancelled because they wanted instead books to focus a little more on Anakin, and the fact that originally Anakin was going to be the hero of the New Jedi Order series, not Jason. And I assumed that the New Jedi Order planning team didn't intend Jason to be the hero and to be on a heroic path until multiple books into the series. But they knew before the first book came out that Anakin could not be the hero, Jason was going to have to take his place. And while not all the authors were cool with that, Michael A. Stackpole apparently wrote Anakin's arc in the Dark Tide duology, hoping that they would change their mind. Jason, all along, was intended to be the hero, which just makes his philosophical journey thus far so boggling to read. He's all over the place, and knowing that he won't come to any sort of definite decision on anything till Traitor, which is books in the future, is a little frustrating for me as the reader. I also found the pace of the story to be a little uneven. 
For the first 90 to 100 pages, it was fast paced. I was very interested in finding out what happened next, but I felt like the middle got a little bogged down. And while the last 50 pages picked back up again, as you're worried about Leia and everyone's fate, it was hard in the middle at points to keep going. There was also a huge contention back when this book was released between the Luke and Mara fans and the Han and Leia fans. The Luke and Mara fans were so excited about the developments in Luke and Mara's relationship. They thought there were lots of sweet, nice seeds between them. But the Han and Leia fans, on the other hand, felt shortchanged. They felt that not enough of the book was devoted to Han and Leia and their reconciliation. And I have to say that I'm sort of siding with the Han and Leia fans here. Proportionally, Han and Leia appear in less of the book than Luke and Mara, and most of their reunion happens off screen. And while I really appreciated Mara's good news, especially after several books of her fighting her illness and being away from the action, Leia goes through a lot here. Not just losing her hair, but being captured, being tortured, and being grievously wounded to the point that her life and her continued health is left up in the balance in the end. I also am repelled by torture in books. And while I know there's a precedent in Star Wars for torture, because we have Leia in A New Hope and Han in The Empire Strikes Back, I still don't like reading those scenes, so I felt very uncomfortable and upset with what was happening to Leia, particularly because Leia seemed to be behaving in a very reckless manner. Han and Droma are just trying to get all the refugees to safety. Leia turns around and decides she wants to get the mining laser, to help, but when she arrives, there's no way she'd be able to get it to Han's location. She's promptly captured by the Yuzin Vong while her children escape. She tries to talk with them, she tries to reason with them, but it almost felt like Jason wasn't going to use the Force to change his mind unless something bad was happening to someone he loved. And it just makes me so sad that the person that was at risk here was Leia, who's already gone through so much pain of her husband being estranged, Chewbacca being dead, the galaxy being in an uproar. And then for this to happen to her, I did feel like it was maybe too much. Almost like in each hardcover book so far, the New Jedi Order authors have had a quota they had to meet of either a character dying or a character almost dying, and it was just Leia's bad luck to be picked for this one. So, in short, Balance Point is the first story in the New Jedi Order where our heroes outright lose. At the end of the story, Duro is fallen, the Yuz and Vuln are closer to the core, Leia's future is left unknown, and the galaxy is now going to hunt Jedi Knights. The threat to our heroes has been significantly upgraded. But at the same time, what kept Bounce Point back from being an amazing read for me is its uneven pace its treatment of Han and Leia, and the fact that I had to wade through so much of Jason's dithering before he was willing to take a stand. So next time, I will be taking a short detour to the first ebook release in the New Jedi Order series, Recovery by Troy Denning.